All right, guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. I want to have for you today is a video that I don't normally do, and that's a review video of a survival kit that I was gifted by Dave Canterbury. He let me have this kit to do a video on, but this is a great kit. It's rather old, so a lot of the things are going to be kind of expired in the kit, but it has some neat tools and some neat ideas. Why not do a review on this, give you guys something to watch and hear my sweet falsetto voice while I do a review for you guys. Now, the kit we have is the Mark III Individual Survival Kit designed for the military or Australian military by Bob Cooper. And it's a decent kit, in my opinion. It is rather large, you can see the tin. It's standing tall, about two inches tall, three inches wide or so across and then you'll notice that the lid itself is relatively long five inches so this is a large tin to have in your cargo pocket banging around in there on your knee while you're running through the woods evading and then moving into a survival scenario but the larger capacity tin is going to give us a lot of space for items we're just going to open this up and dive right in so this kit and we've got instructions right on top there one of the things i wanted to point out was there's a felt adhesive sticker on top of the lid here it's nice and soft okay Okay, so I guess we could rub it as our you know good luck charm when we're out in the field trying to evade capture but it's on the lid it is not on the actual box itself so we could potentially take off the lid because of the hinges back here just fold out and then use the actual container itself as a cook pot or to make medicines boil water whatever we needed to so it acts as a metal container right, first thing on top is going to be our instructions these instructions it's a one full page of instructions that folds out and what I'll do for you guys is just take a picture and splice it right into the video so you can see the instructions the kit components and then some of the ideas that we can use this kit for in any survival situation in an emergency we can take this piece of paper use it as tinder in the fire to get a fire going but instructions right on top Next, we just have a plastic water bag. I'm not sure about the volume of this bag. However, it seems rather large and seems rather thick. So this could be used for many, many purposes. It's probably designed for water procurement, food gathering, or using as a water bladder or as a transpiration bag or solar still. We could use a, a plastic bag like this. It's clear for a variety of things. And then we've got just some gauze pads two of them it looks like 100 percent cotton these could be used as tinder or first aid device right here for minor cuts and lacerations here are some of the things i think are expired in the kit these are just bullion cubes and so we put these in soup and they have since grown soft and are congealed so i definitely wouldn't want to uh, eat these or put them in soup uh, they're probably bad we could use them for bait though and bait a trap and they're rather large i'm guessing the gold one here is chicken and the bronze one here is beef uh, we have those and luckily they're in plastic bags so they're not messing up and they're all over the kit and the items in the kit making this kit rather dirty so boy and soup cubes next just a rather large rubber band rubber band we can use for a variety of things. Most likely this rubber band is meant to one, help close off containers like our plastic bag that we have, but then we can use it to close the tin itself as well as for a slingshot or a catapult. And we can use that to go after a game or small game in the area by making a slingshot out of this rubber band. All right, next up we have just a whistle. This is one of those whistles you can get in just about any survival kit almost. I know these especially came in the Endor, N-D-U-R, survival tins where they have the actual clasp. So you can hook that to your t-shirt or whatever, your coat. Bright orange, good visibility. And emergency distress signal, too easy something that's kind of cool and this is just a multi-tool i'm going to zoom in for you guys you can see this so with this multi-tool it's rather heavy duty it seems fairly firm and strong and it's not sure exactly what the brand is there's no marking on it so it could be just a generic multi-tool but it seems rather strong good enough to cut wire it looks like pliers needle nose you've got measurement markings on the outside of the multi-tool and then we've got just a small regular blade looks like some bottle opener and then some sort of screwdrivers or not really sharp awls we could use on that side not the not the best tool i guess and then we've got a file we can use as well as a phillips head screwdriver and 
an actual can opener. A couple of tools on here, just kind of your standard multi-tool, but yeah, and this one actually is not too bad. I'd like to see sharper tools on this, especially those screwdrivers or the awls. I'm not really sure what those are supposed to be for, but uh, you still have metal tools in here. And like I said, this is not a flimsy piece of metal. It's actually pretty nice, but maybe sharper tools. And we can file those down too before we go out to the field. Okay, another knife. This is just a small folding knife and looks pretty decent. Just a small blade, about one and a half inches of cutting surface. Relatively sharp, not too flimsy or anything. It's got a belt clip or a pocket clip here so we can put this in our pocket once we're out there and we actually cross load the contents of our kit. Multiple cutting tools, smaller ones so we can designate one for processing game and wood. The other one could be for hygiene specifically as well as for just task where we need a cleaner tool that's not covered in animal guts and then we have one that we can use routinely as our utility blade. So two decent knives that we have right here that are relatively useful. All right, next we have just a giant string and our ferro rod and striker. This thing, you can tell it's old because it's fallen apart and broken off. And so we have our ferro rod broken out of the actual plastic that was holding it. So it was sitting something like this in here and then just snapped off. Well, that's no good, but it fell off, but at least we have a striker that goes with it. We could use our blade. I mean, this is still, I'm using my opposite hand, still, Still works, it's not bad, but it's just kind of a pain to hold it like this, get carpal tunnel while you're trying to start a fire. And then it broke off. And so if we lose any of these pieces, we could lose that ferro rod because it's not secured to our cordage. And then even with this, we have another whistle that's on the back of what was holding our ferro rod together. There's a whistle right there that we can blow into. That thing falling apart and breaking is no bueno. And you can tell kind of the age based off the components as well as the damage to these components. Still, we could use it to get a fire going. Next, in this blue little plastic folder, we've got a nice Fresnel lens using the sun's rays to start solar ignition or start a fire with natural materials, even gunpowder, and another fire starter to have that is going to be resource cost effective. Good to go. All right, next, just a tea bag, but a tea bag to make a brew we can use in this giant container down here, take off the lid, put it over a fire and make tea, tea, something hot to drink, especially since our uh, bullion cubes are probably no bueno. But having something hot to drink in any survival situation is great, especially with tea, coffee. We could have coffee, but coffee exacerbates thirst. It is a diuretic. Well, Caffeine in the tea is still going to cause us to want to go to the bathroom and excrete all of the liquids from our body. Tea is a lot less exacerbating than coffee is. So having tea, great for survival. Always have a brew kit. All right, next we've got some band-aids or plasters, as well as an iodine prep pad. So we've got iodine prep pads with our band-aids or plasters. And then we have alcohol prep pads as well. So just a small kit to clean and disinfect wounds, make sure that we're clean and staying safe, and then sanitize or sterilize that wound and then cover it up to maintain health and prevent infection. One glucose tablet, so some sugar. We just chew on that, swallow it, and we get a hit of sugar. Great for survival, especially if we haven't had anything and we need a shot of energy. There is just another plastic bag. All right, then we have cordage. All right, so that's about three meters of cordage from what the instructions say or the kit component list says. So three meters of cordage right there, about 10 feet, good to go. Any cordage is better than no cordage. Another hank of cordage, it looks like a little bit more heavy duty sewing thread right here that we can use for repairs, for fishing line, for fixing our clothing. All right, so some more cordage right there. We've got our sewing kit just a basic small sewing kit needle thread a couple of buttons safety pin multiple colors we can fix up our clothing and repair our clothing a highly prized item for any long-term survivalist to fix their clothing because they only have one set of clothing i've read a couple books recently about guerrilla warfare and guys surviving in the jungles during world war ii and having to have sewing kits to repair their clothing or even pow's for that matter so having a Sewing kit, incredibly important. Next we have a fishing kit. Line, some large and small hooks, sinkers. Pretty decent fishing kit, actually. And so we've got a couple swivels in there as well. We can use that fishing kit to go after fish. Remember, fish first and get out there, find some bait, set up your hobo reel or your cane pole and even a trot line and go after that fish and get that meal. 
And we've got handy dandy signaling mirror. Always good, highly effective signaling mirrors. Good to have in our kit. Got some good wire right there. We could use our multi-tool to break that wire and create snares to go after game and try to get some food. We got a pack of coffee here. This uh, definitely feels like it is no good. Let's see. Oh, actually, 2020. So we're only three years away from that. So that's not too bad. All right, we got a flashlight. I wonder what type of battery it takes. It takes just a AAA battery, so we can easily replace this. It actually looks like there's a cover on the battery, so if we remove that, let's check it out and see if it actually works now. Put the battery back in. We'll assume this battery is from 2020 based off that coffee. Does it work? It works, all right. So definitely works. Great tip there with the kit itself is to put a cover over top of the battery. We'll just put the cap back on with the spacer in there. We have just a really decent flashlight, actually, that we can use. All right, next we have a pencil, and there's no notebook or anything, but we do have a box of playing cards. So I guess if we needed to, we could take out the playing cards. Gives us something to do, keeps morale up, I guess. Cards, and there's helpful little survival tips on them as well. Survival tricks, so these are actually kind of helpful. They give us a lot, plus we can play cards with them. We could use them for flame extenders or for tinder as well. Or if we had to, we could take our pencil and jot very small notes on these to remind ourselves of something or to maintain a journal. Nice playing cards. All right, next, set of tweezers. Simple button compass to give us cardinal directions. Check out my video on how to turn this button compass into a professional high-end compass to give us very accurate degrees to land navigate. A couple of skills we can use with this button to actually make it work for us with this and a couple other things to make it highly accurate. So button compass here, kind of heavy duty canvas needle. That probably goes along with this thread that we found earlier. We'll just keep these together. Push it right down in there so we have that kit. Again, heavy thread with a heavy needle, probably for a purpose. We can use this to repair clothing or even equipment. We've got one surgical razor blade that's still sterilized in the packaging. It says that it was manufactured in 2016 and it expires in 2020. That we have. All right, this is just almost exactly like I recommend in my survival kits is to have some sort of multi-tool, some sort of utility blade, and then even spare razor blades that we can use for other cutting devices for whatever we need to. Processing game, utility, and wood material, and then everyday multifunctional manipulating material. But we have three different blades, three different cutting tools, very important. And then last from our components, make sure nothing else is in there. This is called Condi's Crystals, and it's just potassium permanganate. So we can take this potassium permanganate. If we had sugar, it doesn't say we do as part of the instructions or the kit components, but we may be able to actually take this glucose tablet, crush it up because it's just sugar, with our potassium permanganate, and put combine these two, and then apply a little bit of friction with a stick and like an improvised mortar and pestle, and it will actually cause it to combust and ignite. So we have a way right here, improv improvisational method with a glucose tablet and our Condi's crystals to potentially get a fire going. I may have to try that out. And then lastly, we just have that tin. That tin's reflective. We could reflect the sun's rays, make an improvisational signal, take out the label right here, and then we could put this over the fire to boil water, make a brew, or make our coffee, or use it to gather materials, cross load the remainder of our kit, and then Put other materials that we want to keep safe in here like char for our next fire and any other items and we can put those in there too easy so the only thing we're missing out of this kit based off the packing list or the kit components is just water purification tablets so we don't have those so we would have to boil that water or treat that water somehow in the plastic bag or in our tin right here to treat it and make it safe to drink. It's actually one of the more important components in a survival tin kit like this, so it's what it is. Kind of an interesting survival kit, just another look at a different type of survival kit. Relatively newer items inside that go with it, but a lot of these things are since past their expiration date. So hope you like this video, guys. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for what you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with the video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.